इंग्लिश शॉर्ट हैंड डिक्टेशन नंबर 112 डिक्टेशन स्पीड 140 फोर्टी वर्ड्स पर मिनट रेडी स्टार्ट मिस्टर चेयरमैन सर आई थैंक यू फॉर गिविंग मी एन ऑपरचुनिटी टू स्पीक ऑन द कंपल्सरी वोटिंग बिल आई एक्सटेंड माई सपोर्ट टू दिस प्राइवेट मेंबर्स बिल एंड आई वुड लाइक टू सेकेंड द सेम I find that people living in the remotest parts of the country in distant hamlets and villages do not cast their votes in big numbers when they are forced to walk considerably long distances they do not prefer to do that and fail to cast their vote it is not easy to traverse 5 kilometers or even longer in the hilly terrains my constituency has got so many hillside villages and remote villages There are more than 200 small villages and hamlets situated on the hill tops in my constituency. A polling booth has to be set up even in a place that has got only 250 voters. Police personnel and officials on election duty must be sent to every booth to ensure that all the people cast their votes. during the election we can succeed in establishing a sense of participation in the minds of our people. only when they take part in the electoral process which is like a festival of democracy we must instill confidence in the minds of the people and bring about a spirit of oneness and togetherness and thereby create hope in their hearts towards democracy some of our youth today go astray as misguided youth and go away from the path of democracy and embrace extreme organizations like naxal and maoist movements i am very particular about hilly areas because this modern day menace in the form of naxalism and maoism is more patronized in the hilly regions of our country this venom is spreading fast such students and youth must be brought to the mainstream in the path of democracy we must give them hope for democracy and we must encourage them to participate in our electoral process by casting their votes without fail i think my honorable friend has thought about it and brought forth this bill as a good move in elections we find that many of our government officials are not casting their votes we must ensure that all the employees of the central government and state governments exercise their franchise during the elections if they do not cast their votes then certain disincentives must be there there must be cut in the ration there must be cut in increment and curtailment in promotion many police officials do not vote many staff in the rural areas fail to vote hence it must be made the primary duty on the part of the government employees to vote compulsorily we must have an effectively monitoring system as that will have its salutary effect on the remaining part of the population wherever we have reserved constituencies we must encourage independent candidates to contest this is my personal view even after 60 years of independence there are considerable number of villages that have not seen metal roads when a person from the majority community contests most often the government extends all the basic facilities to that constituency it was the visionary step of our leader late rajiv gandhi to have brought down the voting age to 18 this is to ensure that youth and students are encouraged to uphold democracy and begin to cast their vote when they are still young he want them the right to vote in their teens we must preserve the spirit of democracy by way of encouraging more of independents to contest in reserved constituencies rotating the constituencies ensures the spread of true democratic spirit it should not be like a candidate from a majority community alone shall stand a chance to win an election from a constituency full of such community people in the electorate even the minorities should be able to contest and win the votes of the majority this will augur well for the democracy 
I hail from a minority community and I represent a constituency that has got the electorate from the majority community living in majority. Democratic spirit helps us to rise above the caste and community. My neighboring Lok Sabha constituency is not dominated by the minority community like that of mine. People belonging to major religion live in majority there. But still, the people of my constituency living there perform their democratic duty rising above caste and communal lines. I would like to thank the electorate of my constituency who have elected me though I hail from a minority community. It only vouchsafes their spirit of oneness, togetherness and democracy participating in the election which is like a democratic festival. No nation was raised on caste lines. No nation can remain united just because same community of people live there. There could not have been two Pakistans, two Germanys and two Vietnams if race and religion are to decide the unity of a country. But it is only the democratic spirit that can keep a country united. The spirit of democracy inculcated in us by Mahatma Gandhi and later by Srimati Indira Gandhi and Sri Rajiv Gandhi and now by Srimati Sonia Gandhi help us to rise above caste and community and uphold the democracy with a spirit of oneness and brotherhood. People living in the remotest part of the country like hilly areas must be given enough of care and attention. Such people living in forest areas are vacated without prior notice. They must be given priority in our governance. They are deprived of their voting rights to elect their democratic representatives. We must create a conducive atmosphere. We must facilitate them to cast their votes wherever they live. My esteemed colleague has moved this bill with a visionary approach to ensure that all the people participate in the election by making use of their democratic rights. Only when the confidence level of people increases, they will have more faith and confidence in democracy and nationality. It is only people coming from the Congress background who can think of such a move to include all the people in the ambit of democracy. The Honorable Member wants to have one booth for every 500 meters. But I feel it is enough to have one booth per kilometer because in my constituency I find only five booths for a vast stretch of 32 kilometers. In the hill areas of my constituency there are only 60 booths. People have to walk more than five kilometers to cast their votes. That is why they fall prey to certain electorate malpractices. This must be checked. In order to avoid money changing hands during such time, we must ensure that more booths are set up to cover almost the entire population thereby involving all our people in the democratic exercise. This bill has been brought with a spirit of nationalism by a Congress member. Our Congress party accords greater importance and prominence to youth. Our young Lieutenant Sri Rahul Gandhi extols the youth to come forward to participate in the process of democracy. More and more participating in the election and casting their votes without fail in the hustings will strengthen our spirit of togetherness and unity. Hence, I once again congratulate my esteemed colleague who has brought this compulsory voting bill in this August House. Mr. Chairman, Sir, the kind of debate which has gone on this private member's bill has really sanctified the very concept of the private member's bill. I must compliment and comment the kind of debate which has taken place on this bill. I have noted down the points from all the speakers who spoke. I must say that it is most illuminating, enlightening and forward-looking. I am very much educated by this. I think it is an ideal situation to have compulsory voting. There is no doubt about it. We need to graduate our country, our electorate. All of us should ultimately graduate ourselves into that kind of a domain where every citizen of this country should exercise his vote. That is why the kind of support which this bill obtained from all the members by all sections of the people 
by everyone starting from Kanyakumari to Kashmir reflected that our democracy is still vibrating and people have the passion to nurture the great democracy of this country. The elections are the first national festival of democracy. Everyone will have to tribute that kind of sanctity.